All right, welcome back. This is chapter seven. This is the second part to chapter seven. And in this video, we're gonna talk about security. So let me go ahead and fast forward down to that piece. Now, please note, <clears throat> SQL security is a complex, and very complicated uh, topic. In case we're going to just cover some of the basics of security, uh, oftentimes this is the level of security that a database programmer um, would kind of know, but a DBA would know a lot more security uh, pieces. In fact, there are classes dedicated strictly to the security of a database. So keep that in mind. Don't think that uh, once you're done with uh, this chapter, you will be an expert on security. Um, the other thing to let you know is some of the things that we're going to talk about and some of the homework related to the security piece, uh, you cannot do in um, uh, Apex Online. Now, if you've installed your own SQL Oracle uh, system, great. Uh, you should be able to do uh, all these things. Um, but, uh, but even then, I'm not sure that you would be able to accomplish all of it. Uh, and so just keep that in mind when you're doing the homework that some of the homework you're going to just have to type it out as as if you were going to be running it and uh, send that in to me uh, without any real results. <clears throat> and that's okay. I'm expecting that. So let's talk about security. It's the prevention of unauthorized access to a database, which is pretty simple. Um, and I think when you talk about the unauthorized access, I think you also are, are implying that you're creating uh, boundaries around access, right? So sometimes we want to give certain pieces of data to users, but not all the data. So the unauthorized access kind of covers that as well. Some users may be able to retrieve and update anything in the database. You know, typically your admins can do that. Um, we always recommend that you should minimize that as much as possible, especially on production systems. <clears throat> The, uh, the more people that have access to update and retrieve data from anything and everything, um, the more likely you are set up to have mishaps happen. So uh, kind of keep that in mind. Other users may be able to retrieve data, but not change data. This is actually very common and it should be the norm for applications and end users. Anything that um, doesn't need to update data, don't let them. Don't give them the, even the ability to. Uh, I've seen and reviewed applications <clears throat> that have, um, they, they would pull back data to read it and never update it. But behind the scenes, they also didn't limit the security. And I would explain to that team that what they've done is they've actually left a security hole in their system. While they think that they've limited the access through the application, uh, the fact that they haven't limited it on the database side does possibly present the ability to uh, for uh, someone with uh, uh, bad intent to get in there and find ways around your application. <clears throat> Other users may be able to access only a portion of data. So that happens too. Uh, we definitely, uh, you know, even when we were just talking about the views, uh, that's a good example of us wanting someone to access only a portion of data. So it's definitely possible. In regards to security, we've got a couple commands that we can make use of. Uh, we can grant permissions. So we can say, hey, grant this user the ability to uh, main, uh, to have a mechanism, uh, or excuse me, grant this user certain permissions on the tables in our databases. So that's one way that we can uh, limit security. Database administrators can grant different types of privileges to users and revoke them later. Uh, we can uh, uh, allow users to select, inserts, update, indexes, delete uh, those pieces of data. So that's what you're going to use on the grant. <clears throat> Database administrators can also use revoke to remove privileges from users. So it's one thing to understand is, you know, when you add a user to a database, what, what, permission might they have out of the gate? What permission uh, are they already um, able to utilize? So you may have to use a revoke right from the very beginning. So it's, it's format is similar to the grant. Uh, and um, um, I don't, hold on one second. Let me get some examples here. Okay, so 
to uh, show some examples, here's uh, some of the privileges that can be done uh, through the Oracle system. We've got the ability to update select, the insert, update, delete, uh, references, alter, index, and all. All is just what it says, by the way. It's all privileges, all of these on a table. So here's some examples of how to do a grant. So here we're going to grant, uh, and before you do that, actually, let me show you the syntax. So this is grant privileges, what privileges here, on the object to which user. So here's that example. Grants the select, insert, update, delete on suppliers to Smith J. Now, if you want to give all, you can say grant all on suppliers. So obviously suppliers is our table to Smith J. Smith J is our user. And then there are groups of types of people. So select a grant select on suppliers, which is a table to public. Now, similar to that revoke, we can, as we were talking about, revoke that privilege on the table or object from user, because that could also be a view, by the way, from user. So our examples, same thing as what we had before. Revoke, and this is the privilege, delete on suppliers, which is the table or a view, from Anderson, which is our user. All right, that is an example of our security for uh, this uh, particular chapter. Like I said, there's not a lot uh, to this chapter's security. It's more of the grant and uh, revoke, uh, but that is it. And then the next video we're going to do is on indexes. I'll see you in a moment. Thanks.